the manifested presence of God. We started last week, and we're on part two today, and we're going to go to Revelation chapter three. And so we believe as we release these words, amen, that the Holy Spirit, he's already been manifesting himself, that there's going to be some powerful things happen in your life. The Lord always demonstrates the word that is released. He will demonstrate his word. He is faithful to do that. And so, Father, we just thank you for the word today. Father God, I just bless the ears to hear and the hearts to receive whatever it is you have for them today. Father, we thank you for healing and miracles. We thank you, Father, for revelation, scales falling off eyes, ears being unstopped today to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And Father, I thank you that we're coming up higher. Hallelujah. So have your way, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Revelations chapter 3. We're going to go to some uh, foundational scriptures before we begin each, each week on this because I wanted to get it down in your spirit. Amen. So Revelations 3, verse 20, first, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and will dine with him and he with me. He who overcomes, I will grant to him to sit down with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, he said, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. So we have ears to hear. Amen. You are a remnant people. We are kingdom people. Our eyes are open. Our ears are open. And we can hear and see what God is saying to us. Uh, by the spirit in verse four or chapter four. Let's keep reading. After these things, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I had heard, like the sound of a trumpet speaking with me, said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after these things. And we know that word here come up higher. It means come up in this place of worship. OK, God wasn't coming down there where he was. He had to come up where God was, and, and by worship, a lifestyle of worship, we access into this throne of God right here. So when we are worshiping today, and you're worshiping spirit and truth, you're at the throne of the Lord. Amen. Now let's look and see what it looks like. Immediately, I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was standing in heaven, and one sitting on the throne, and he who was sitting was like a jasper stone and a sardis in appearance, and there was a rainbow around the throne, like an emerald in appearance. Around the throne were 24 thrones, and upon the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white garments and golden crowns on their heads. Out of the throne came flashes of lightning and sounds and peers of thunder, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne, there was something like a sea of glass, like crystal. And in the center and around the throne, four living creatures full of eyes front and behind. The first creature was like a lion. The second creature like a calf. The third creature like the face of a man. And the fourth creature was like a flying eagle. And the four living creatures, each of them having six wings and full of eyes around and within. And day and night, they do not cease to say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. So those of you that just said that, guess what? The angels are saying it with you right now. Amen. They never stop saying this. And when the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, to him who lives forever and ever, and the 24 elders will fall down before him who sits on the throne and will worship him who lives forever and ever, and will cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Worthy are you, O Lord, and our God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and because of you, your will, they existed and were creative. Amen. So, remember, he said, he told him, he told John, to he knocked, you have an ear to hear, right? Let him hear what he says. John had an ear to hear. He was in the spirit, and he was in his worship. And God opened up the heaven and took him to a place so he could see what is going on uh, eternally and even now in the realm of the spirit. It never ceases this place of worship. 
And we access that by a lifestyle of worship. We enter into that place. Now, you note that it said that the seven spirits of God were there. Let's go to Isaiah 11, the seven lamps of the Holy Ghost. And so I want to break down uh, each lamp as we do this. But we're going to go to uh, Isaiah 11 that we have access to by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And Isaiah 11, it says in verse 1, Then a shoot will spring forth from the stem of Jesse, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and strength, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord and will not judge by what his eyes see, nor make a decision by what his ears hear. But with righteousness, he will judge the poor and decide with fairness for the afflicted of the earth. And he will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips. He will slay the wicked. Also, righteousness will be the belt around his loins and faithfulness, the belt around his waist. Selah, Jesus, speaking of Jesus. Amen. And so we want to talk about today and teach on the spirit of might. The first lamp here. Well, it's not the first, but that's the one we're going to. The spirit of might. Amen. So we want to break these down. And so um, by worship lifestyle, we access the lamp of the spirit of might. All right. So let's look and see and through the scriptures and see what God is saying about the spirit of might. One of the names in Isaiah 9, 6, Jesus is called wonderful. He's called counselor. He's called might. God okay he was the he is the mighty God the everlasting father the prince of peace so the spirit of might rests fully upon Jesus we know that amen he rests fully upon him so let's go to Ephesians 3 we're going to walk the word today so you say why well, didn't bring my Bible just write it down in your notepad um, Ephesians chapter 3 hallelujah verse 16 it says that he, meaning the Father, would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power through the spirit in the inner man, through his spirit in the inner man, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith and that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled up to the fullness of God. All right. That you may be filled up. And then 20 says, now unto him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we can ask or think according to this power that works within us. And then God is to, says to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever and so when you're talking about might we're talking about power his power in you and also upon you and so he said that the father would grant or bestow a gift right or a supply <clears throat> a furnace he would furnish something that is necessary for us he knew we were this earthen vessel, so he granted us. Amen. He furnished us. It means he, he gifted us the Holy Spirit. He gifted us access to the spirit of might to manifest his presence in the earth. Amen. Hallelujah. That the riches of his glory, that means the abundance of, it means to have abundance. It means to have a continual supply that would be released from this power right here that I'm talking about that would strengthen me, right? There's some things that you have came through <clears throat> and we are going through now that we need the spirit of might in our life, especially now the days that we're in. We got to have the spirit of might, amen? Amen to do the things that God has called us to do and to see the manifested power because it really is his manifested power. It was, it's in us by the Holy Spirit. And we're going to break that down and he's upon us. And so John 7, 37, 38 says, if anyone thirst, he said, let him come unto me and drink. 
he that believeth on me, as the scripture saith, he said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water, right? Living water flows out of us, and that living water is the power of the Holy Spirit. It is a life-giving power. What I love about the Holy Spirit, when we pray in the Holy Spirit, and we are spirit-filled people, and we receive that gift from God, right? When we pray in the Holy Spirit, the water, the living water goes out of us, okay? And it goes into dry, thirsty lands, right? It goes into those places, thank you, and it waters the earth. But guess what else it does? It refreshes my spirit too, right? So it's twofold. It is twofold. This power that we have, we have to exercise this power by praying in our most holy faith, right? You say, I don't have no strength. I need some power to, to do this task. I need some power, you know, in a transition. I need power to go to school. Come on. I need power to finish. I need power to go to this new job. Whatever that is, you get it from praying in the Holy Spirit. It's not going to, you, you, don't, you want power, but you want supernatural power. Physical strength is one thing, but these messages are about our spirit man. Okay, we have a full blown Holy Spirit man in us. Okay, so we have access to the spirit of might. Thank you. Access to the spirit of might to do everything that God has called us to do. Amen. He said, I seek and knock. Guess what? And you're going to find it. <laughs> you get hungry enough. Guess what? You will get you will be filled every day if you want to be filled every day. But if you listen to the old flesh man, you're not going to have much power. Your flesh man will tell you just roll over and go back to sleep. Tell you the truth, right? Your flesh man will tell you that's too hard. That's too much. I don't have this. I don't have that. You need the spirit of might. You need the spirit of might to be a finisher today. Look in the earth. We need might. We need power. Amen. So let's go to Colossians chapter 1. Because this power that God's talking about is available to you. And even after every session, we are just going to pray for an impartation and for, for that to be uh, to flow out of us and to get an understanding of what we really have on the inside of us. Because we allow that old flesh man, this carnal earthly nature, to talk us out of miracle signs and wonders and breakthrough and all these things God said we could do. And we just listen to you know, our flesh, sometimes everybody thinks it's the devil. No, it's just your old stinky flesh. That's all. It's that old flesh. It's not really the devil at all, right? We blame him for things, and I'm telling you, it's us. Colossians 1, 19 says, For it was the Father's good pleasure for all the fullness to dwell in him, meaning Christ, and through Christ to reconcile all things to himself, having made peace through the blood of his cross. He said, through him, I say, whether things on earth or things in heaven. And although you were formerly, he said, alienated and hostile in mind, engaged in evil deeds. He said, yet he has now reconciled you in his fleshly body through death in order to present you before him holy and blameless and beyond reproach. If indeed you continue in the faith firmly established and steadfast and not moved away from the hope of the gospel that you have heard, which was proclaimed in all creation under heaven and of which I, Paul, was made a minister. That's a good, that's a good stuff right there. He's saying, look, he said, you need the spirit of might. You need power to finish. He says, you, you need power to continue in the faith. <laughs> because many people get shipwrecked. I've been shipwrecked before. We all have. I'm sure if you've been in church somewhere, you've had a shipwreck. You've had a setback, right? You've had things happen. You've been disappointed. You've had hope deferred. You've had all these things, you know, that happen in your life. But thank God for his power that sustained us. We wouldn't be here today unless he, we had the sustaining power of God. 
I know, don't you? He's, he's, I feel him right now. He's sustaining us. Hallelujah. So that word power is Kratos power. It means dominion of the kingdom of God. So you remember Jesus said the kingdom of God is within us, right? So we have this power, the dominion of the kingdom of God inside of us. Hmm. Ephesians 6.10 says, your strength is in the Lord and the power of God's might. There's that word again. Your strength is in the Lord and the power, it's Kratos, power of God's might. What is he saying? When you get the Holy Spirit, when you get born again, you have the kingdom inside of you. You know, we teach that, of course, because you get born again. You're born with a new nature now. You're reborn by the Spirit of God. And he comes in, but that's the beginning that's not the end of a thing. That's the beginning. And then we get, we get filled and baptized in his spirit. And so Jesus was our savior. But now when I get the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the spirit of God fills me, he's my king now. I've crowned him as king. He's Lord. He's master. Because now I have this power inside of me to be more than a conqueror. You need the power of, you need the spirit of might to overcome temptation. And we'll go there in a little bit. You need that, amen? And so Kratos power, dominion of the kingdom inside of us. So that means everything that's in the kingdom, uh, in the kingdom of God is inside your spirit. He's in there. And so you have access to pull out of the kingdom of God that which you need. If you walk in the spirit, right? If you have eyes to see as Christ sees, ears to hear as Jesus hears, you have to access the Holy Spirit when you want to make a decision, when you want to pray for somebody, when you want to do something. You have to call upon the power, the spirit of might to do those things. Amen. And so this power gives us strength over temptation. This Kratos power gives, it causes us to have power to endure. What do we have to endure? Trials and tribulations. It says, it is true, that power in us causes us to uh, be able to go through persecution and still stand strong. This supernatural power is steadfast power, and it causes us to minister under the anointing of God. Okay? You know, the Bible says that God anointed Jesus, right? We know. The Spirit of the Lord was upon him when he got, when he was baptized by John. The Holy Spirit came and uh, completely filled the man Jesus, the Son of God. Mm -hmm. And then he went out doing miracles and healing and all the things he did. So, but the, but the power of God came in him with the fullness of every lamp of the Holy Spirit. Every, uh, the fullness, can you imagine the fullness of the power in Jesus? Amen. Hallelujah. And so trials and tribulations, it causes us. And so Jesus experienced that temptation, but he had the power of the Holy Spirit. And he overcame every temptation so we could too. See, we have a choice to overcome it or not. It's true, isn't it? We can listen to the spirit of God because the Bible promises he makes a way out of escape. That's why you got to build yourself up in your most holy faith. That's why you have to call on the spirit of might. You got to help me right now. You got to help me right now because I'm fixing to go this way and be ugly. I'm fixing to go this way and say and do what I want to do. So you have might. Come on now. You have power that will cause you not to yield to that ugly carnal man in there. Right? And we pull up out of that because I love Jesus more than I want revenge. Come on. I love Jesus more than I love temporal things. I love him more than my stuff. Come on. I love him more than anything. And so I'm not going to grieve my king because I've really been bought and I'm a bond servant of the king. And so you don't understand that you're a bond servant if you continually cycle in these sin things. You really just don't know who you are yet, right? Because out of sonship, there's power. A child don't know they got power. 
They've been born and baptized into some power. You know, they can even have the Holy Ghost, but until they begin to grow and mature in the things of the Spirit, they don't even know what they have access to yet. But they really have that they have it inside of them. <laughs> but they have to grow and they have to be built up in faith in order to learn to exercise their rights and use and have utilized this power that's inside of them. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And so it, this, this power, give, it's steadfast power to minister under the anointing of, and, and the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And that, that power, that anointing, that, uh, it gives us, it's also authority. Basically, you have a license from Jesus, the king, to operate in power. <laughs> you have a license. When the unction of the Holy Spirit moves on you, that's why you got to discern the Holy Spirit, his voice. Come on, you got to learn and grow how to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes people that are growing, they always, and they're still young in the Lord, they really think they, they heard something, but they really didn't just yet. They might have heard something, but it's coming maybe out of a soulish desire, maybe out of something else okay but nonetheless god god you know he's he loves us to operate in faith come on now we're pleasing him by stepping out and doing stuff but we have to, wouldn't it be nice if we just could just our ear was open to hear mm -hmm. and we learn his voice amen because jesus said that you you will know his voice and as strangers you won't follow it's like if the voice of offense is talking to you and, you know, if you're still yet coming up, you might say, well, God told me I could have vengeance on my enemy. What? Where's that in the Bible? It says vengeance is the Lord's. I will repay. But I'm telling you, people think those things. They think like that. That is not the voice of the Lord. And so they're following a stranger's voice and they're going to get in trouble for that conviction comes i mean all kinds of stuff they open the door for other voices to speak to them that's why you got to know the word because it opens the door and all these other voices come on the piggyback of that offense come on now all these other voices just begin to talk to you and now you begin because you didn't cast down the voice the stranger's voice come on you need to think about that the stranger's voice you got to test those spirits you got to test them. James 4 tells us you test the spirits. Make sure it is the spirit of God. Amen. That's why we need a relationship. And we need a relationship with this word, the living word. Amen. So we know no matter how it made me feel, that's not the Lord. That's not the nature or the character of Jesus. And that is what we're after right here, right? Because like we said in, in uh, School of the Bible, we don't exalt our gifts above our character. I need, oh, help me, Father. We got to have our character refined. Amen. And so Ephesians 1, hallelujah, talking about the spirit of might here. Ephesians 1, 15 tells us, for this reason, I too, having heard of the faith in the Lord Jesus, which, which exists among you and your love for all the saints, do not cease giving thanks for you. He said, well, I'll make a mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom, revelation in the knowledge of him. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saints and what is the surpassing greatness of his. There's that word, Kratos, his power, meaning his might toward us who believe these are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might there again, which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand on heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion in every name that is named not only in this age, but also in the one to come. Praise God that he wrought in Christ he raised him from the dead. He's talking about the spirit of might, the power of God, that we would get a revelation of the surpassing greatness of his power toward us. Amen. 
that's in us. He, in verse 19, honing in on that, what is the exceeding, okay, that exceeding greatness of his power, that word power there is dunamis, because you know when um, in Acts 1-8 you will receive power, you will be receive dunamis power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power within us. So here I'm going to break it down. So dunamis is outward. The power of God comes upon us to do something. I liken that word to dynamite. Dynamite, power, right? That's right, boom. Dynamite, dunamis power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty Kratos power inside me. You see, it's connected Power within, guess what? Power upon, you see, the spirit of might. So a Kratos power is God's power ruling within us. It's his strength, his dominion, his might on the inside of us. And then the dunamis is God's power upon us. That I just said in Acts 1.8, the spirit of God will come upon you. He comes upon us to enable us to do miracles, signs, wonders like Jesus did and his disciples, you see. So that Kratos power, power within, I should overcome temptation. Mm -hmm, right? I should be able to, my character gets refined because I have the Holy Spirit. He convicts me. He deals with me. He chastens me. Right? He tells me, I told you not to go right, but you did. And now you find yourself in this place. Right? And we can say, well, he never told me, but I promise you, if you have the Holy Spirit, he's always going to lead you. He's going to speak to you. He's going to check you. But many times we just cancel that out because our flesh wants to do something. <laughs> Isn't it true? Our flesh always wants what our flesh wants. And so, and then we say, well, you know, there's grace. I'm just going to do it anyway because I want to do it. And I know God's with me. And guess what? Then we got to go through a trial or a tribulation. And then we get mad at God because we're in a trial. He didn't tell you to go right. He said, go left. But you went the way he said, do not go Right. Even in the New Testament, he said, touch not, taste not, don't handle that. He said, I'll be a father to you. Right. Why did he say that? He said, look, I'll be your father. He said, I will guide you. I will put you on a straight path. And my path is a path of safety. It's safety to obey the obey the Lord. There's safety in God's boundaries. I'm telling you, there's so much safety. But our soul sometimes, you know, we've all been there and still in certain places, we still have some wounds and some issues and, and things in our flesh sometimes. And those things talk louder and they overshadow and overtalk the voice of the Holy Spirit. He's not screaming at you to go right. He's giving you a gentle unction. Don't do that, child. Don't touch that child. Come on, stop. Don't, don't do that. Come over here. That's how God talks. God is love. God is joy. God is peace, patient, kind. He's good. He's long-suffering for sure with us, right? So, but what I love, though, it says that all things work together for the good of those that love God and are called according to his purpose. So even in my stubbornness, God will use that. I don't know how God does it. But it's his business. He uses those things to refine me. I'm telling you, he uses those mistakes. And when you come out of those places where you went the wrong way, you're like, Father, how did I ever come out alive? How did I ever do it? How can, how can you forgive me for those things? Because I got power. Because I got the kingdom of God and the dominion of God inside of me. And he knows I belong to him. And so somehow all heaven orchestrates and fixes and changes me and makes me whole. It's supernatural. So you can't keep trying to make things natural when it comes to the spirit of God. You can't understand some things, but I want, I want you to know it's God's power ruling within me. God's power upon me. Mm -hmm. The anointing enables you and gives you grace to move in this spirit of might I'm talking about right here. 
And so in the old covenant, you saw the spirit of might. We read about the spirit of might being upon people. They weren't yet baptized in the Holy Spirit. Remember Jesus, they were talking even about the temple. And he says, look, that's going to be destroyed. He said, he said God's, God's not going to dwell in these bricks anymore. He was trying to tell them, he, he's not going to dwell in these buildings. He's going to be in us. <laughs> He's going to have a new temple. Just wait till I get up out of here and the Holy Spirit comes. There's something new happening. Praise the Lord. That's us today. Amen. He said, it ain't going to be about all these bricks and all this stuff right here. He said, I'm going to tear this down. Talk, I'm going to tear it down. Mm, hallelujah. That's good news. That's why we have power inside of us. Amen. So you see in the Old Testament, you see in with Samson, right? The calling, the spirit of God came upon him. You see Gideon, the spirit of, it was the spirit of might. They couldn't have done those things without the spirit of might. Look at Moses. Look at how God used Moses parting the sea. All the things that they did, supernatural things. Elijah, right, passing up the chariots. How does a man pass up horses? The spirit of might came upon that man. And Elijah raising the dead, the spirit of might flow through the patriarchs when he chose to for God's will. And now we have limited access, church, to operate in these things according to the will and purpose of God. Being led by his spirit. He's always with us. He's not, he's inside of me. And he's anointed me and commissioned me to do what Jesus did. What a blessing. Amen. What a blessing. And so Moses, Samson, Gideon, you know, all of them, the spirit of might would come upon them. Mm. Let's go to Mark 10. See, we just got to know what we have access to. That's all. And stop looking at yourself in the natural. Stop looking at your natural limitations because if you focus on your limitations when God is speaking to you, you'll nullify the supernatural. It ain't going to work for you because you're focused on your ability. You're focused on your limitations. You're focused on where you came from, uh, who your parents were, if you had parents, or if you have that gift. Well, that gift shines brighter than my gift. That's all. That's all that flesh talking to you. Come on now. It's the flesh. You limit the power of God when you focus on your personal limitations. And so the church has done that. We have to take the limits off of us. Amen. Take the limits off today. And we're going to do that too. Acts 10, 35. Get rid of that condemnation. You know, condemnation is a disease of the spirit. God does not heap condemnation on you. Just get it right. Amen. In Mark 10, I believe, go to Mark 10, 35. James and John, the two sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus saying, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. What a bold statement for Jesus, right? <laughs> And he said to them, what do you want me to do for you? And they said to Jesus, grant that we may sit one on your right hand and one on your left hand for your glory. But Jesus, now, come on, you know you've asked things like that. <laughs> Maybe not exactly like that. But you know, sometimes we get a little prideful and we ask some things that we know we ain't ready for yet. But Jesus said to him, he says, you do not know what you're asking. He said, are you able to drink the cup that I drink or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, we are able. And Jesus said to them, the cup I drink, you shall drink. And you shall be baptized with the baptism which I am baptized. But to sit on my right or my left is not mine to give, but it is for those whom it has been prepared. Right? Right? And so, hearing this, the ten began to feel indignant with James and John, calling them to himself. Jesus said to them, you know that those who are recognized as rulers and Gentiles lord it over them, and their great men exercise authority over them. 
but it is not this way among you, but whoever wishes to become great among you shall be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, and, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And so when you look at that, to be like Jesus is to walk like him. Okay? They were asking of some things, but they were not yet like their king. Or they wouldn't have asked these things. They were wanting authority to rule. And God says, that's not the way we do in the kingdom. That's, that's, not, that's what they do in the earth. He said, but my kingdom is not of this world. He says, yeah, you're going to go through some things, and you will. You, we're going to go through it because I've called you. Come on now. I've called you. I've chosen you. You have my spirit. You're going to be baptized in power, and you are going to go through some of the same sufferings that I did. Mm -hmm. You see that? You're still going to go through these things. But I'm here to tell you, to, to be like him, to have this kind of power, you got to walk like him. The walk of Christ is power, and the walk of Christ is an overcoming life. So when you become like him, this, and you, you have access to the spirit of might, and you begin to flow in this power that I'm talking about, he will transform you to be like Jesus. That's the goal. That's the goal right there. So in, in doing this, you got to get your eyes off everybody else, right? You can't look at your neighbor and say, well, they can do whatever they want. How come I can't, Jesus? Come on now. That's, that's all that stuff over there. No, you're tailor-made. You're unique in your calling. What God's called you to do is just for you. You say, well, they have gifts like mine, and this, it's still their gift that God put in them. It's the gift of God, but it's still not exactly like yours. There's some things, there's some way the gifts of the Spirit flow, but it's still flowing through a unique vessel. <laughs> Praise God, right? It's still flowing through a unique vessel. Apostle Norma and I carry strong deliverance, but we are different. If you didn't notice, everybody thinks we look just like sisters. But, <laughs> but her gift, I, 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 I love her gifts. You know, it's, it's the Lord in her, the king of glory, right? I celebrate her gifting. And we, God, use this different administration of the Holy Spirit, but it gets the job done. However God wants to do it. Amen. Because it's not about trying to compare ourselves with someone else. That will block up the power of God. You want the spirit of might using you? Don't compare yourself to other people. Okay, we got, that's why we celebrate diversity in here. Because God is diverse. Hello, look around. Look how many flowers out in the field. Look at, look at creation. Look at, the, look at ocean. I love to watch ocean, ocean documentaries and all those things like that. Why? It's beautiful, the diversity and the creativity of our God. Amen? It's power. So you have to be, you have to be, um, you have to love what God has given you. And if you want the power, the spirit and the power of might to flow through you, you can't compare yourself to other people. Because what happens is many times people feel the call of God. God has spoken to them. They know they're marked and they're called. But they have watched other preachers' lives. Okay, you might be called to be an evangelist. And you've watched the evangelist. And you feel like either you can't measure up to that evangelist. Come on. You can't be like them. That's too, you know, maybe they did things. And you, I could never do that. Or... You know, you're just, you, you see them fall and stumble and struggle. And you're like, I don't want that call. You, you see what I'm saying? You cannot compare yourself to other, other ministers. If you're called in the ministry, if someone else has a seeing gift and, you know, they do that a lot. They, you know, put celebrities uh, status on preachers today. But that's not the will of God. Thank God they got gifts. But what happens is when you celebritize people, people get their eyes off of Jesus and get them on the person. And then, and then here, comes, here comes that spirit of pride, right? Because I'm telling you, it's in our nature to be prideful. 
It's in the carnal nature of man. That's why Jesus said in this kingdom, I'm going to give this kingdom so much power. I'm going to give my people my power to use. Think about that. God, the creator of the universe, says I'm going to package them with power. They're going to have my spirit, but I'm going to teach them to serve in a humble place. I'm not going to let them have my power and be exalted above men. Come on now, think about that. Because you know what happens? When that happens, power destroys you. In the world or in here. Power destroys you. So he gave us so much. That's why he requires us to have his character and nature. Because if I get his character and his nature, I won't be exalted above myself or above everything else. You know what I'm saying? I won't exalt myself above God like Lucifer did. Right? So we got to stay in a humble place. That's why he said, look, you, you want to you wanna have all that? You better be a slave of all. You better serve. You better deny yourself. Come on. And, and even in your serving people of God, you don't serve to get something from God. Because that's also pride and a wrong motive. You serve because you love him. Period. You serve. You love people. You, you love people because you love the king. And Jesus clearly loved people, right? So you love people because you love him. Even difficult people, you have to let God circumcise that heart, right? And he will do it, but what do you need to do it? Power. You need the spirit of might, don't you? You need the spirit of might to become like Jesus. And guess what? You have access because you have it in the inside of you by the Holy Spirit, and he's anointed you to do. Okay, so you have power. Amen. That's why he said, look, you can't operate like the world operates. You can't do that. Not in the kingdom of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And so working of miracles, the spirit of might is for the working of miracles. Different kinds and degrees of miracles happen and flow through the spirit of might. Many of you have experienced the spirit of might. He's used you that way. And guess what? He's worked through you that way by getting you delivered because we're a deliverance house. The spirit of might is the spirit behind, which is the Holy Spirit. Okay. But he operates through the spirit of might to get people free. Let's go to Acts 19. Let's walk some of these in the book of Acts. I'll show you where he was working. And it's all the Holy Spirit. But clearly, there's different manifestations of the Spirit in the gifts and this and the lamps of the Spirit. And you know what? He knows exactly what needs to flow through you. Mm-hmm. And when you get uh, more understanding, I call upon the Spirit of mine a lot. All the traveling we do, all the ministry that we do, I need him. And he shows up. <laughs> Amen. Acts 19, verse 1, when Paul was in uh, the Ephesus, it happened while Paul, while Apollos was at Corinth and Paul passed through the upper country and came to Ephesus and found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said to him, no, we have not even heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, into what then? He said, were you baptized? And they said, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized you with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in him who was coming after him, that is, in Jesus. He says, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they began speaking with tongues and prophesying. He says, now there, now, he says, there were in all about 12 men, Hallelujah. So the Spirit of God came upon. Let's go down to 11. It says God was performing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul. He stayed there for two years, and he was working with these people, y'all. This was a missionary journey. He was developing the church. He was doing miracles. He was preaching the kingdom, all of that. 
And it says, God was performing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul so that handkerchiefs or aprons were even carried from his body to the sick and the diseases left them and the evil spirits went out. Hmm. He said, but, but some also of the Jewish exorcists who went from place to place attempted to name over those who had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, I adjure you by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. And the seven sons of Sceva, Jewish chief priests, were doing this, and the evil spirit answered and said, I recognize Jesus. I know about Paul, but who are you? And the man in which the evil spirit leaped on them and subdued all of them and overpowered them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. And this became known to all, both Jews and Greeks, who lived in Ephesus. And look, fear fell upon them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was being magnified. Look what happens, a great move of God. See, the sons of Sceva were not authorized to do that because they didn't have the power. They didn't even, they, the Jesus whom Paul preaches, you see. But we're authorized because we have his spirit. And he said believers are going to cast out demons. Come on. We have his spirit. And then he gave us his anointing, his authority, the spirit of might to work. And it said that many who practice, look what happens after this. Remember I told you everything works together. Many who practice magic brought their books together and began burning them in the sight of everyone. And they counted up the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So the word of the Lord was growing mightily and prevailing. Wow. So there was a great move of God there, right? There was special miracles by dunamis power, creative miracles. That word special, when it says there was special miracles done by the spirit of might, it, was, it means to shine, to break forth. It means brilliant miracles. We don't even know what they were, but it's brilliant, shining miracles. And it means luminous fire and light. Can you imagine? We don't even know. Special miracles, brilliant miracles, illuminating miracles. I don't know. We won't know, but we'll know someday. And so you see that special miracles and then casting out devils. Let's go to Mark nine to, to show you what I'm talking about, that it is done through the spirit of Mark, uh, spirit of might, because it says it in Mark nine. Hallelujah. It says in Mark chapter nine, verse 38 says, John said to Jesus, teacher, we saw someone, look here, casting out demons in your name. And we tried to prevent him because he was not following us. Apparently there was a man that was in the crowds and he had received some revelation, understanding, and he became a believer. Come on. And he began to exercise his faith and the power that he received in these meetings. But look what Jesus says. Do not hinder him. For there is no one who will perform a what? Miracle in my name and be able to soon afterward to speak evil of me. For he who is not against us is for us. For whoever gives, okay, he who is not against us is for us. So he said, don't hinder him. He didn't say don't hinder him from casting out demons. He said don't him hinder him from working a miracle. Amen. So deliverance is done through the spirit of might. Amen. Acts 6, 8 is another one. It says, Stephen, for the sake of time, Stephen, full of faith and power, did great miracles among the people. That word power is the same word we've been speaking about, the spirit of might. He was full of faith and the spirit of might flowed through Stephen to do great miracles among the people. And another uh, scripture for that is Acts 3, 4, when the lame man was healed by Paul. Okay, the lame man, let's go to Acts 3, was healed by Apostle Paul. The spirit of might was released into this man's body. That's what happens when we see um, legs grow out and bones grow. Come on now. We know that ain't nothing but a miracle of God. The spirit of power might flow through those uh, dry bones Hallelujah. 
Don't ever, don't ever take those miracles for granted up in here, y'all. Don't ever take that for granted when God is moving like that. Acts 3, 1, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the ninth hour of the hour of prayer. And a man who had been lame from his mother's womb was being carried along, whom they used to sit down every day at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, in order to beg alms of those who were entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John asking about going into the temple, he began asking to receive alms. But Peter, among uh, with John, fixed his gaze on him and looked at us, and he began to give them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. He wanted money. But look what he gets. But Peter said, I do not possess silver and gold, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus, Nazareth, he said, walk. Seizing him by the right hand, he raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were strengthened. With a leap, he stood upright and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And that brought what? More revival came, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, so that the, the spirit of might was released through Paul into the body. It, I'm telling you, it's, it works miracles, works through the spirit of might. Amen. In Hebrews 2, 4, it talks about different various miracles. In Hebrews chapter, chapter 2, verse 4, that miracles were done. Let's read that. Hallelujah. I pray your faith is building today. Amen. 2, 4, it says, God also testifying with them both by signs and wonders and by various miracles and by the gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. Okay, so all of that is connected to the spirit of might. In Colossians 1, did we read Colossians earlier? Okay, 1, 9 through 14, write that down. Strengthen with all might according to his power. Yes, we did. His might, his dunamis, and his kratos power that is upon you. And so this kingdom dominion which is inside of you gives you the ability to exercise dunamis, God's miraculous power to do mighty works and signs. So because a church has not been equipped to understand the power that they have through the Holy Spirit, many of them think it's just for special people, but it's not. It's for those that have the Holy Ghost on the inside of them, right? And you got to get an understanding. You got to get understanding that you have power on the inside of you. Luke 17. Yeah, a lot of scriptures. It's Sunday morning. Come on. <laughs> Luke 17, 20. Now, having been questioned by the Pharisees as to when the kingdom of God was coming, he says to them, what? The kingdom of God is not coming with signs to be observed, nor will they say, look, here it is or there it is. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Access power inside of me. Amen. You got to know. And so you have to know Jesus was saying, don't look for me because I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. Remember, he said, I'm going to leave you, but I'm going to send you another, right? You got to know what you carry today. So the Father strengths, strengthens you with an inward power in order for you to carry dunamis power. That dunamis is a continual flow of the Spirit of God in your life. Call upon him. You got to call upon him when you're in those places. Mm-hmm. You got to call upon him. Sometimes you might have a, you might even be at work. It ain't just, it ain't just, I'm telling you, everyday life. You have to call upon him sometimes. I need, you know, you're at that last stretch and you're tired. Your flesh is tired. Holy Ghost, come. And we're going to show you with, uh, with the other lamps, you know, even the spirit of understanding and the spirit of wisdom and all of those things. They, th even in the old covenant, the spirit of wisdom would endue people for a purpose or for a task. Spirit of understanding, Daniel had that. And we're going to keep walking through that. But guess what? You have him on the inside of you. You can call upon those uh, manifestations of the Holy Spirit. You can, you can operate in this. So the spirit of might within you enables you 
to put off, we said, the sinful habits of your flesh, crucifying your carnal passions, and you could put on Christ. It gives you power to walk in love like Jesus. And then the spirit of might upon you enables you to do the works of Jesus Christ with signs, wonders, and miracle, dunamis power of God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. In verse 13 of Galatians 5, you can write this down. It's my last one here, and then we're going to do some praying. Verse 13 says, you have been called to into liberty. He said, only use not liberty for the occasion to live by the flesh. He says, you have been called to freedom, right? He says, but by love, serve one another. Walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of your flesh. The, the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you cannot do the things you would. So God says, look, I've invested in you. <laughs> I bought you. I purchased you with my blood. No one else did that for you. I purchased your freedom. Praise God. <laughs> I purchased your freedom. So I could put my power, the spirit of might, on the inside of you. So you could demonstrate my kingdom in the earth realm. I need you to be kings and priests. Amen. I need you to demonstrate my power. I need you to do what I've called you to do because I've bought you. I'm in heaven. I release my spirit. You have access to what Jesus had access to. Let's stand to our feet. We have access. We have access. Well, I don't know. I don't feel good enough. Do you have the Holy Spirit? You have access. Do you know the king? He authorized you to do it. He's authorized you to do it. Let's just begin to pray right where you're at. We need a, the impartation of the spirit of might. Amen. Hallelujah. But first, if you're here today and you've never been born again, you've never received Jesus Christ as your savior. You never confessed him as your savior. Guess what? He is available. He is waiting for you. If you're here and you need to be born again, we're going to lead you in a prayer to receive Christ. If you have never been born again, the Bible says you confess with your mouth, you believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. Whoever calls upon the Lord, the name of the Lord shall be saved. He's waiting for you to call upon him. He's waiting for you right now. He's waiting for you. I thank you, Father, for the conviction of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Father God. And you are so faithful, Father God. If we confess our sin, you are faithful and just father to wash us and to cleanse us of our sin and you fill us fresh with your holy spirit so even now we're going to be praying right now we just pray right now for an impartation just begin to pray if you have never been filled with the holy spirit guess what you can receive the holy spirit right there because there's a reference in the bible more than one where when they were releasing the word the holy spirit fell upon them and they spoke in tongues we thank you father for a fresh impartation of the holy spirit even now the spirit of might that dunamis power father to be released upon your people right now in the name of Jesus, that the spirit of might right now, Father, would be revealed to your people in the name of Jesus. The spirit of might for working of miracles, signs and wonders, healing, deliverance. We thank you right now, Father, for the power of the Holy Spirit, for the power of the Holy Spirit. There he is right now that you just began to rest and fall on your people that they would be sensitive to you holy spirit 
that they would be sensitive to your Holy Spirit. We cancel out, uh, Father God, right now, all those limitations. I just break limitations off your people in the name of Jesus right now. We break off insecurities, limitations right now. We break off all that comparison spirit in the name of Jesus. We loose all those assignments right now, everything that's blocking them. Father God, whenever you speak Holy Ghost and they say, oh, no, I, I can't do that. Uh, that's, that's for apostle or that's for prophet. Uh, we break it in the name of Jesus. We break off the limitations. Because God wants to use you in the marketplace. God wants to use you in the marketplace. God wants to use you in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, on your job, on the br in the break room. God wants to use you when you're out on the street. Come on. Walmart, come on. Kroger's, wherever you shop at the mall. God wants to use you. We thank you right now, Holy Ghost. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you touch your people right now now we thank you for a fresh impartation i just hear this too the holy spirit wants some of you to to forgive yourself and release all the missed opportunities just release that to the lord Quit, quit living under condemnation. Release it. Father, we release missed opportunities. We ain't going to leave out of here condemned. We release it. We forgive ourselves right now. We forgive ourselves right now. We want the spirit of might to flow through us. And we give you the glory for the spirit of might. We thank you for the spirit of might working miracles and healings. We're not taking it, Father. We're not taking that. We give that to you because you're flowing through us. You're flowing through us. We don't have to fear what man would say. We've been authorized by the king. We thank you for healing and miracles, Father. Father, flowing in this room. We thank you for the spirit of healing and miracles, Father God. The spirit of might flow through these bodies. Flow through these bodies. Miracles. Even now. We thank you, spirit of might. Touch bodies. Touch bodies right now. Let the spirit of might just flow through bodies right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for healing bodies. I thank you. Father, we receive your healing today. We receive healing in our bodies, healing in our organs. In the name of Jesus right now, healing Healing the blood pressure. Healing to our eyes. Healing right now to our kidneys. Healing to the bladder. Heal our emotions today. That healing flow right now. Healing flow right now to our pancreas, to the body to the joints in the name of Jesus we receive your healing we receive the healing oil the healing oil that's flowing right now through your people the healing oil that's flowing that healing is flowing in the name of Jesus touch those kidneys touch those lungs let your healing flow right now in the name of Jesus, fill us, fill us fresh, Holy Spirit. Yeah, fill, fill us fresh. In the name of Jesus, great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Hallelujah. We give you glory. We give you glory. We worship you, Father. 
We worship you, Father. That's it. I see some of you putting your hand. You can put your hand on what hurts as an act of faith or something that needs touched. Just put your hand on it. You know why? Because you